Hey guys, I'm here to explain the humanure composting concept. I've been doing humanure composting off and on for a total of 10 years, more or less. And everything that we describe here today is all spelled out in the humanure handbook by Joe Jenkins. I highly recommend getting yourself a copy of that, especially if you're going to practice humanure composting. It's a really, really scientifically written and humorously written document, so it's, I, I consider it uh, required reading for humans. Uh, so again, the Humanure Handbook by Joe Jenkins, and he's describing basically what he calls a sawdust composting toilet system. This is our, this is our full bucket here. I'm just about to replace it so I can show you the process, but this whole design is his. He's got drawings and measurements for the unit here, but it's as simple as that. Once the bucket's full, out it goes. Empty bucket goes back in, and the lid fits down nicely. If you follow the directions in the design, you have the lid sticking out just so that when the lid of the seat comes down, it makes contact. So it's nice, a nice seal there, although I use the lid when it's not in use myself. But if you, you have to do the modification of making a little drill bit hole here and swinging these pieces 90 degrees so they miss the, the top of the bucket. But if, if you follow all of the measurements, you come up with this nice seal here and everything fits tight. But like I say, when, I, when it's not in use, your best bet lid on it. And can you tell us about the type of wood you use for the shavings to well, cover? Well, the, the ideal type of wood is if you live in proximity to a sawmill where they're actually making lumber out of trees. If you can get that material, it's ideal because it has, you know, the right moisture content and the right composition. Unfortunately, where I live, there's no sawmills. So I'm, right now I'm buying this, which is a pine shavings product and it is sold at a like a horse bedding it's a horse bedding material buy it at a feed store that's what I've found that's uh, the best for here just because I don't have access to a sawmill like I said it um, seems to work really well I noticed that there's yeah. no smell yeah I mean the, that's that's the key in all of this is good coverage so whenever you're finished with your making your deposit don't be shy with the sawdust. Make sure it's everything's sealed up with the sawdust. The sawdust is the biofilter, the seal. And then the plastic lid is another layer, right? So as long as you keep it covered, there's no issues. And, and how do you feel about urinating in it? That's fine. Do whatever you want in the bucket. It all goes into the compost pile. I've seen them with urine separators before. It's not necessary. What what you can do if you're if you're really into it, you can save your urine, separate it, dilute it with water, and use it directly on your on your crops. It's a completely pathogen-free nitrogen source. So, I mean, if it's fine to throw it in the compost pile, if you want to save it separately, dilute it with water. I think it's ten to one. There's another book, Liquid Gold, that describes that process. Awesome. Well, let's see uh, the rest of your. Uh, process here. You got it. Okay, so once your bucket is full, another key is to have, you know, plenty of buckets. I keep like seven or eight buckets around. So you get a full bucket, make sure the lid's on it, and then what, I, what I've what i been doing is keeping them right here on this little cart. When they get full, put them on the cart, and then I have my empties right here on the cart as well. So that way, I, I wind up doing a uh, the next step, once a week, like on a Saturday, Sunday morning, I'll go and do my composting at the compost pile, grab hold of the wagon, and the humanure train rolls on. Okay, so this is my composting bin setup. I'm basically getting this roll of wire off the shelf at Home Depot or somewhere like that. And the ideal diameter or for a compost pile Ideally, you want it five feet wide, five feet high, and as long as you care to make it. 
like a windrow. In this case, I'm keeping it in a five foot diameter. Contains all the material nicely. And like I say, buy a material like this off the shelf, cut it to length, and then simply sort of fold it together here, thusly. And you got a, a nice, easy to work with container for the compost itself. The other key element is the hose with a high power nozzle is really good for washing. But what you want to make sure and do, what I do is when I start in to ready my pile, I'll attempt to use the pitchfork and create a, a bowl in the center of the pile. So it's basically working around the ring with the pitchfork a little bit, making a little saucer in the middle. More or less. From there, it's just a matter of emptying so. the bucket, dumping the contents of the bucket in the middle, making sure to get everything in, and then your hose, rinsing, and also key, make sure all of your rinse water also goes into the middle of the pile. I like to use a brush like this, and just a little bit of soap, scrub scrub clean. Again, all of the rinse from that hose into the middle of the pile. And then what I'll do is I'll have another other containers with my kitchen scraps. And once I've dumped all my humanure compost in the middle, my kitchen scrap buckets will go on top of that. And then everything gets sort of flattened out with the pitchfork all the top, leaving the the perimeter if you can and once all of the buckets are rinsed everything's in the pile then I'll collect dry carbonaceous material ideally you'll have a, a source of that on site near your pile if you're in a setting where you don't have the ability to grow it or collect it on site you may have to purchase straw bales or something of that nature. You might be able to collect dry leaves from people that are throwing it away on the side of the road in bags. What about grass clippings? Grass clippings will work. Ideal, the, like I say, the ideal material is dry, brown, carbonaceous material. You can use grass clippings if that's what you have, throw it on. Again, the, the key is to just cover. Get a nice thick biofilter lid on the pile every time you're completed your emptying of the buckets. So in this case I happen to have mulch material that's been collected from tree services. Not ideal because it's high sort of wood content but it works as well. And you're just covering your pile. And again, you, get, you can't be stingy with the cover material. You have to make sure that you have you know, plenty of bales of straw, plenty of dry leaves, whatever it is you're using, that's the key to keeping your pile sealed. It's a biofilter. And then once these bins become full, in this case I call this one full, that's about as high as I kind of like to deal with it. So once it's topped off like that, I will move on to my new bin. So usually I, I have enough bins here, usually I can peel one bin off of the oldest pile and bring it into an another location to create the new pile. Once your pile is full, you will walk away for one year. According to the handbook, any human pathogens without a host for 12 months cannot survive. So you're adding another layer of safety into your system by leaving this pile to decompose for a full 12 month cycle. So here's a finished pile for you guys to see what it looks like at the end. Basically you just have to, there's usually a fair amount of material on top that has to be relocated to the next pile. But after a year you got the good stuff left over. Okay, so this is the finished product here. You can see it on the ground. Um, 
I try to limit it to my fruit tree grove. Another added layer, keep it on the on the perennial plants that are not close to the ground, but according to the handbook you can put it wherever you want at this point. And this is a pink custard apple, happily doing its fruiting thing 